to a burning issue, especially if you live around Loch Ness. A delegation of local residents have been meeting the Environment Minister Edmund Putz to push the case against a proposed incinerator in the area. With me now, fresh from their meeting, are two local residents, Ray Clark and Sir George Bade. Thank you both uh, for joining us. Um, well, first of all, uh, Sir George Bade, just give us in a nutshell, if you can, the arguments against the incinerator. There are three basic arguments against incinerator. First of all, it's the wrong site. Uh, Loch Ness, I don't have to, have to stress this, but it's what's called a Ramsar site. It's the most internationally protected kind of site uh, in the world. It's simply the wrong site. Secondly, it's the wrong technology. It all rests on having one big centralized incinerator. We think that there are many better technologies which are distributed smaller, several of them, etc., smaller carbon footprint. And thirdly, it's the wrong economics. Uh, it's going to require out of the public purse at a time of great uh, stringency, 30 million. In fact, we've even heard a figure of 70 million. Those are the three basic arguments against it. Okay, uh, just uh, picking up on a couple of those. First of all, on the, on the need maybe for smaller uh, incinerators. If it's difficult to get local residents to support an incinerator anywhere, uh, surely that just multiplies the difficulty of getting this done if you're actually having, say, several instead of just one. Well, we're not talking about smaller incinerators. We're talking about different kinds of uh, technology, and it gets all very technical, and I don't want to pretend that I'm a, a scientist and an expert on that, but there are lots of uh, new technologies, pyrolysis, gasification, anaerobic digestion, a whole range of things uh, that aren't incineration at all. But even if you're going to have one single incinerator, which is what the company is proposing, you would not put it in a rural area for the simple reason that it would be only about 30% efficient because all the heat goes up the chimney. And uh, you would put it in a more industrial area. Such as where, Belfast, which didn't move on there. Well, the obvious place, what I and I recommended several years ago, uh, is they have a site in Ballymena. And that, of course, is the main uh, poultry producing area as well. So the carbon footprint, uh, it's an industrial area. The chimney, sorry, the uh, facility becomes sort of something like 95% efficient rather than 30% efficient. But isn't this basically not in my backyard? Isn't no, it? not at all. Not at all. There are 31 sites, uh, you know, the company uh, that we have hired strategic planning to do it. There are 31 sites that score higher than Loch Ness. I mean, Loch Ness, sorry, right. Just to bring, bring Ray in on this, I mean, Ray, do you, do you get any hope having just met the minister, or was he keeping uh, things close to his chest? Well, the, the, the minister today was basically in listening mode. The minister was there to actually listen to our concerns, to listen to why we believe this incinerator should not get planning permission where it has been proposed. Um, the minister is away with a list of questions, um, a list of suggestions, a list of issues which we have raised, which he needs to get further feedback from other departments and specialists within Northern Ireland. I think Newton Emerson in a recent uh, Irish news column had a go at your group and claimed that you were putting forward a bogus arguments, including the heating of Loch Ness, which he said was a ridiculous argument because it, it, it will make no difference within sort of natural changes to Loch Ness. Uh, is that the case? Are you making bogus arguments? Well, no. The, the Rose Energy proposal in that the, they have commissioned specialists which say that they're going to return water to the Glenavy River at 1.5 degrees above ambient temperature. We have commissioned similar reports, and the specialists which we have, independent specialists which we have commissioned, have said that that temperature could be up to 8.5 degrees above ambient. What we are calling for is a, the planning application to be rejected by the planning service or the minister, or we are calling for a public inquiry so that full and proper scrutiny of this planning application can go through the judicial process and the people of Northern Ireland get the opportunity okay. to decide whether or not this should go forward. Well, thanks very much for letting us know. Uh, right, and uh, so, George, thank you both. Thank you. Well, that's it from uh, Stormont Live for today. We're back tomorrow uh, with plenty on the agenda, including the important question, what price democracy? Tune in tomorrow for the answer from all the team here. Until then.